Okay, so um, we're in 6.4, and we are going to try out some examples here, and I'm just trying to experiment uh, to see if this works here. So um, let's take a look now, and we want to try to factor this first item here uh, completely. And what I notice in both of these, if you take a look at both of those items there, um, is that they both have a number I can divide out of them. I can actually divide a 7 out of both of them. So let's go over here and let's try out blue here. So I can actually divide both of these by a 7, right? Which means I can take a 7 out of both of them. Okay? I also realize that both these items have an x cubed that I can take out of them. So I can take an x cubed out of both of them. So there is the x cubed. And if I take an x cubed out of here, um, it's like subtraction, so I have three of them left over. So uh, I took out the 7x cubed, and all I have left over is a 5, right? Because 5 times the 7 is 35x cubed. And if I divided that out, I have a minus 6, and x uh, cubed is still left over. So all we're trying to do is factor out everything that is in common is all we're trying to do. So let's move on here to the next problem. Let's factor this completely. Um, I'm looking here at this item and I realize that they both have a 4 in common. So let's take out a 4 from both of these items. Um, when I take that out of both of them, I'll put that down here. Now I'm looking at the x's. What do the x's both have in common? The x's actually have uh, 5 of them in common. I could take uh, 5 out and if I take uh, 5 out of these, I still have 2 x's left over. So I took an x uh, to the 5th power out, and now after doing that, I still have a 4 left over inside because 4 times 4 is 16. I don't have any x's left over. I took a 4 out of this, so I have a negative 10, right? A negative 10 left over because um, negative 40 divided by 4 is negative 10, and I still have uh, x to the fifth left over, or sorry, x squared because I took a fifth out, so it should be an x squared there, left over. Um, when I'm trying to factor, this is squared, so 2 can also be squared, but what about the 10? I can't find two numbers squared that give you a uh, negative 10, so that is done, that is what it is. Um, on the next one here, um, when we're doing this, I can look at the numbers first, and I can actually divide a 5 out of both of these items. So let's take a 5 out of both of these items. Um, so when I do that, the 5's factoring out, so I'll put that on the outside. Um, I also can take an x to the 4th out of both of them. So if I take an x to the 4th out of both of these, that leaves me with a 3 x's left over there. So I took an x to the 4th out of both of those items. I still have a 3 left over in here because 3 times 5 is 15, right? Um, negative 25 divided by 5, that's negative 5. And if I took 4 items out of there, that's why I have the x cubed left over. <clears throat> and I could try to simplify that using the cube root things that we learned as well, or, or the cubed items, but 5, something cubed that gives you 5, or something cubed that gives you 3, there isn't anything. So that is as factored as we can make it. Um, with this one right here, factor this one completely. Um, I'm trying to find things that, you know, according to our factoring formulas. And when I take a look at this one, I realize that I can actually use the difference of uh, squares here. And why does that jump out at me? Well, it jumps out at me because what is 81 square rooted? That's 9, right? So I actually have a 9 squared there. Well, that's great, except how can I write this x to the 10th as something squared. Well, I could actually write that as x to the 5th power, right? x to the 5th power squared, because what is 5 times 2? It's 10. So that actually is x to the 10th, and that is actually 81. The reason I did that is now that I wrote everything in terms of something squared, now I can write it in terms of um, using the difference of squares. That gives me the first item. According to difference of squares, you take the first item minus the second item, which is what we have there. And then you take the first item and you add it to the second one to get that right there. 
So we want to try the same uh, same thing out here. For 16 there, I can rewrite 16 as 4 squared, right? So if I rewrite 16 as 4 squared, um, I can also rewrite x to the 8th as something squared. And I can rewrite that as x to the 4th squared. So when I do that, I now end up with, according to the formula, I have x to the 4th, right, uh, minus 4, according to the difference of squares, and that leaves me with x to the 4th plus 4. Well, here's actually the uh, crazy thing about this problem. I'm still not done factoring it. You want to know why? The reason is, um, when you have a subtraction sign, you have to take a look to see if you can do difference of squares again. And if you look here, this two or this four, I can rewrite that as two squared, and I can actually also rewrite that x to the fourth as x squared squared. So what that means is I can actually take this and keep going. I can write that first item as x squared because it's the first item minus two, right? So minus two. So there's that. Then I can rewrite that as x squared plus 2, because according to the formula for difference of uh, squares, take the first item and the second item, and you uh, subtract it and you add it. And this x to the fourth I still have left over. And the reason why I can't do difference of squares on this problem is actually pretty simple. I can't do difference of squares with this problem because it's a addition sign, not a subtraction sign. Okay, so when I come back here, we will work on factoring these types of problems now um, and to see what we come up with.